Well, today the award for the least self-awareness shown in watch writing ever has got an undisputed winner. And that is Mr. Cole Pennington for his recent piece on the efforts of Corona Tokyo to limit the impacts of flipping. That Mr. Pennington was able to write that piece about that topic without once mentioning his own company, Hadinki, takes a level of self-awareness so low we have yet to find a scientific instrument capable of measuring something that small. Well done, Cole. A feat unlikely to be even approached in the near future. Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville and I'm feeling particularly kind of snarky today. I put out some rhetorical questions about Hadinki a couple of weeks ago and it was really questioning what their model is and how they work and do they understand where they are and do they listen to themselves when they speak? Well, today I felt we got an answer. What we got was a, well, in fact, it was probably a couple of days ago, but I think we got an answer. Um, Very quickly, the article was from Cole Pennington, a guy I've got personally a lot of time for, um, a guy whose writing I enjoy, whose views and podcasts I really quite enjoy. But he wrote this piece about the efforts of Corano Tokyo to limit the effect of um, flippers and eventually scalpers getting hold of new limited edition pieces, uh, preventing true enthusiasts for getting them and then flipping them purely for profit. Um, He wrote reasonably well on the topic, although the headline and the entire article kind of missed the point, but I'll come back to that in a later. But what was really amazing to me was he managed to write that entire piece talking about the, the woeful conditions of the watch community today, how hard it is to be an enthusiast, how difficult it is in this world where flipping seems to be rampant, where uh, people in the know, people with the ability to jump in first and buy large quantities of in-demand watches can hold others to ransom. And then he spoke about one particular company's uh, desire to deal with that and a technique that they're trying. That you're able to do all of that whilst working for Hadinki, the organization which perhaps has done more than any other media organization to create, promote, and accelerate that kind of FOMO-fueled drive to be in first, grab as many of these things as you can and get them on eBay within seconds of placing your order, without ever mentioning that, struck me as so unbelievably lacking in any kind of self-awareness, I was actually taken aback. I really was really, I, I'm, I'm pretty cynical and I'm hard to surprise, but Jesus, that actually surprised me that he could write that piece and never once mention his own company. I suppose on one hand, we should take the good news out of this. We've, we've worried that there's some kind of conflict of interest, some kind of collusion between the content writers of Hadinki and the people that sell watches. Well, it appears the writers are absolutely clueless about what the rest of their organization is doing. They seem to have no idea that their company even sells watches. They probably don't seem to understand that their company is one of the big traders in these flipped watches now. It's It boggles the mind. And, and like I said, I'm pretty cynical. I'm, I'm hard to surprise with these things. But that article really got me. I struggled to understand how they put that out. Are they taking the piss? Are they laughing at us right now? Were they sitting in the back room thinking, this is the funniest thing ever. People are going to lose their shit over this. I don't know. I hope so. I hope 
that this is a massive troll of us. Because to imagine that they truly didn't even see the irony in all of this is just, it's just too hard to believe. Anyway, I'm going to go back a bit and say, actually, the whole premise of probably the article, that certainly a lot of the comments and absolutely the headline of that article was also completely wrong. Because the premise was, can this stop flipping? And what I would argue is nothing's going to stop flipping. Nothing. This We live in a capitalist society. You can try a million and one different things, but it doesn't matter. People are going to buy things and then sell them. But that's that's okay. That's not the problem. The problem is that twofold. The first problem is that um, it's not about stopping people buying and selling. It's about trying to introduce a system so that true enthusiasts who just want the watch for the purpose of having the watch, not for some subsequent resale, are in fact able to get it. You don't kill flipping by somehow stopping people. You can't kill flipping at all. People will buy watches that they don't want and then will sell them later. That is just the world. So having that occur isn't the problem. The problem is when those people can buy watches, but the actual enthusiasts who want to get them can't. And so the, the whole headline of will this stop flipping is looking in the wrong place. A better headline is, will this ensure that the people that, that actually want to own the watch will get the watch? The answer to that could well be, yeah, maybe it will. Maybe, look, there's a whole bunch of problems here. There's the problem of the website crashing during that 10 minutes, the window not being made. And I think the Messina Lab uh, Ming thing had something similar go on. There's a whole bunch of things that can go wrong still. I'm not convinced that this whole idea of a 10 minute window is necessarily the smart way to go. Maybe a half hour window, maybe an hour window, maybe some other system, I don't know. But you know, Good on Corona Tokyo for having a try, having a red hot go, not going to slap them around the head for what for their efforts. Um, let's see how this plays out. The other thing I would stress, and I would love to see a, a, a magazine like Hadinki with their power do so, although it is absolutely not in their interest to do so, is to say this. I am sure that this Corona watch will be lovely and it will be one of thousands of lovely watches out there right now. It is getting a lot of hype and a lot of clicks. But you know what? Tomorrow, there'll be a watch that's just as good. And the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. If you're so fixated on the idea that this is the one watch you can buy, then you've got a problem and you've got to get out and do more work and find other watches. Because there are tens of thousands of other watches out there that you can buy and love and enjoy and cherish in place of the dozen or two which are hot and hard to get. So good on people like Corona, good on people like Halios who are trying to find ways of making sure that they can get their watches to enthusiasts. I think that's great and I applaud your efforts, but it shouldn't be necessary. People like Hadinki, people like Cole, people like me should be saying to you, you know what? It doesn't matter. Embrace the JOMO, the Jo, yeah, JOMO, the joy of missing out. Because you know what? Jump off the hype train. There's a million other watches, probably literally, that are just as good. Open your eyes, find your own watch and move on. That's how you solve the problem of enthusiasts not getting the watches they want. You educate enthusiasts. You give enthusiasts the courage to find their own watches. That's what Cole should have written. And that's something Hadinki is never going to write because the idea of you finding a watch that isn't something they sell and or recommend isn't really how they play the game. I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watches, and I'll see you later. Almost certainly less snarky and less ranty than I was today. Bye.